Hello and welcome back to Success by the Numbers, your show to help you understand numbers in your business better and to manage your business by the numbers. My name is Mona Tenjo and I'm your host and I'm also the CEO of Work on Your Business, where we help business owners grow their business strategically and to not drown in the operational day-to-day -day business. Today we have an amazing guest who's also going to share a lot of insights on business growth. She has built several six-figure businesses herself. She's dominating niche markets in Australia and she has clients all over the world. She is super successful. She has been a multiple award winning entrepreneur. You are about to meet Julia Mann and she's going to share her insights on how you can create a six figure business, but also how, how she came to that massive success that she has, how she became a multiple award winning entrepreneur and what it takes you to get the same. So let's welcome Julia. Hello, welcome Julia Men to this um, Success by the Numbers episode. Thank you so much for taking the time. I know it's really early for you in Australia. And so uh, I'm like in the middle of the night in Germany. That's the beauty of internationalization, right? It doesn't matter what time, it doesn't matter where. We always find the slot. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's not that early. It's 8.30 in the morning. So okay. <laughs> breakfast has been had, the gym has been done, everything's good. Wow. So are you an early bird? No, not really. But if I have to, I will make it work. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Because I'm, I'm really a night owl. So for me, that's right now perfect time. <laughs> so it's like 1130 in the evening in Germany. And that's perfect oh. for me. <laughs> so awesome. So um, just for anybody who does not yet know who you are, um, could you please kindly introduce yourself and just share a little bit of your backstory? Like what were the stages, like the main stages of your career and how did you get from where you were? in the beginning to where you are today? Well, I will try and keep it short because I know we only have a certain <clears throat> amount of time for this. But basically, um, my business is called Lash Tribe, um, where I help successful and fully booked lash artists to, to start their career, basically, and become successful and fully booked. We have lots of online courses and in-person training courses as well. I have a beauty academy in one of the best suburbs here in Australia, where I live in Brisbane, in Queensland. And I basically started this journey of this company that I currently have. I also do coaching on the side where I train other coaches and those who want to become trainers as well. But the main business, Lash Tribe, I started in 2016 out of the need of not enough information in my profession in the internet. So it's eyelash extensions, which is a really, really small niche or niche, depending on where you're listening in from. In Australia, we say niche. Sounds much nicer if you ask me. <laughs> but basically at around 2015, um, I've always had little businesses like home salon, then I worked for someone else and I always started to go back to working for myself. I just like to be my own boss, create my own hours. But um, my husband actually sat me down one night that was in about 2015 and said to me, Julia, we need to go through the numbers in your business because I don't think you're bringing in much money. And I was like, nah, it will be okay. Like, I feel like I'm busy enough. I make money, but I was also buying a lot of products and I was buying equipment and tools and things like that for the trade. Um, so I agreed to it. And then two days later, it turned out that I was making a loss in my business, but not just for the last month or so, it was literally two years of my business making a loss. So I was working for free and giving money to product services and not not even breaking even. So that was a huge wake up call for me because until then, I felt like I had a business, but really I was playing having a business because I didn't know exactly what it required. So long story short, I was very depressed for about a week I was literally in bed all week and just thinking, what am I supposed to do? I was like in my mid thirties then, maybe early thirties, mid thirties. And I thought, what am I going to do for the rest of my life? I can't just keep dabbling with things here and there because I also have um, shiny object syndrome, which a lot of right brain people have, always being creative, always coming up with new ideas. But I needed to find something that I could actually focus on and concentrate on. So number one, what I did is, was I get a coach. I got a coach in late 2015, which um, she, it was a lady and she helped me to brand myself. And I actually also asked 10 of my best friends and family what they thought I was good at, 
because sometimes when you you're so familiar with what you do and you're engrossed with everything on a daily basis you don't really see how people see you on the outside you think i'm really great with this i enjoy this but hey if it doesn't make you money what is the point of doing it you've got to learn how to monetize monetize it or maybe find something else that you're also really good at like your genius zone but actually learning how to monetize it in a better way so it was quite interesting because 10 text messages came back and i said be totally and brutally honest with me and tell me exactly what you think I should be doing. Like I'm literally in my midlife crisis. I'm not making any money. I don't know. I'm lost. Help me out. So every single person had something in the text message that said you're very, very passionate about one particular topic in whatever moment you are at, like whether it's working out, whether it's nutrition, whether it's eyelash extensions or anything that I was doing back then. And you're really, really good at teaching others how to do it. So that kind of gave myself a little bit of an aha moment. It's like, okay, teaching, all right. So I'm, if I'm passionate about something, I'm very good at explaining it. I'm very detailed, might be the German in me as well, because I grew up in Germany, <laughs> um, Brazilian born though. So, and then uh, five or six of those messages said, Julia, you're very good at eyelash extensions. Like, I like your pictures when you post them. I was doing lots of other things too, my hair, makeup, cosmetic tattooing, anything to do with skin. And so I said, okay. So from one day to the other, I dropped everything that I was doing, absolutely everything. And together with my coach, we developed um, like a, a strategy behind teaching and eyelash extensions combined it and that business literally blew up within three or four months I had people asking me via a Facebook group that I opened because that was my like business strategy mm -hmm. was um, value-based marketing within a Facebook group not enough information anywhere else in the world I was the first to literally give away free advice and do how-to videos when Facebook live hit back in 2016 I was waiting for it I'm like yes it's finally here now I can share with the world what I know. And through that, um, yeah, I got my first training um, courses happening. Then people from overseas asked me if I could train them. Of course, I wasn't able to because I was in Australia. So I developed online courses. And I think the first three or four launches of new courses that I did, they each brought in over six figures per launch. So I very, very quickly went from not knowing what to do with my life to building what it is today, a seven figure company. And since then I've also developed a product line. So we also have a multi six figure online shop where we supply my own brand, Lash Tribe um, products to other artists so they can use it in their business. And um, yeah, now we have the coaching as well to help others to do the same. We're becoming well known in their niche um, starting to train others, developing online courses. And that's what I'm really focusing on right now because everything else is now set up and kind of running without me, which is awesome. Um, but you know, it wasn't easy. It was a process. And this was a long story that I wanted to make short, but sometimes you can't shorten important things, right? <laughs> and you also realize so, yeah. I don't interrupt you because that's I think it. this is super valuable for the people. I mean, there were so many nuggets inside. So ask other people if you don't know what you do. I did the okay. same, actually. When I was, um, I, I left a, a really high paying job. And before I left, I actually asked people yeah. and I did not only ask people that were close to me, but I also asked people who were not so close to me. So people who just got to know me maybe half a year before, because they have very different perspectives. However, there's a common denominator and that's very interesting. And yes, it hurts. <laughs> there are some feedbacks where you don't want to have them, but it's really, really important that you get them because we all have these blind spots. And, and if, we, if we are not aware of them, they can really hurt us badly. Um, and at the yeah. same time, we may miss the biggest nugget that we actually have. The funny thing is the teaching topic. This is a topic that is, um, I, like when I was in, in grade seven, so I was like 13 years old, we have in German this, this professional test, right? When we have to go to the office of work and then you have to make a test. And I told them like, you can tell me anything, but I don't want to be a teacher. Like not thought for me. <laughs> and they made the test. They were like, well, but you are very qualified to be a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> and I tried to avoid this for all my life. And the funny thing is it keeps coming back. And I heard something, I think two years ago from Kim Kiyosaki, who said, um, it, it's called the law of, um, what's it called? 
And there's a certain law, which basically the law of perseverance. And it's actually from Buckminster Fuller. And it basically says that as long as you move towards a target, whatever that target is in your life, as long as you move toward that target, you automatically fulfill your purpose. So it's like throwing a throne in the water and it feels like, you know, you have those, those waves. Uh, and and as, long as, you, as long as you move towards your goal, you will automatically fulfill your purpose. And you don't even need to know what your purpose is because you will automatically fulfill it. And that teaching topic keeps coming back no matter what I do. The more I move away, the more it draws me to it. So it's really funny that you experience that as well and that you're like, okay, well, obviously I'm, I'm born to teach and I'm really good at it. So why not making money out of that? Absolutely. Yeah. But you know what? I think there's teaching and then like teaching. There's different types of teaching. Yeah. I'm more of a coach, a mentor, someone who shows your business. I could never be a teacher, as you know, like cool. in a school or like a university. I would top myself if I had to teach children all day. Like that would be like the worst. I have two kids myself. I don't want to have a class of them. But teaching adults, you know, it's a little bit different and really helping them to literally change their life, build a business on their own and make money. It's not teaching for me. It's literally just helping them to see things differently and helping them with my expertise that I've had over the last six, seven years that I've trained myself through, like spending hundreds of thousands of dollars and coaching myself, right? A teacher never stops learning which is also really, really important. But I could never be a normal school teacher, no, that's for sure. <laughs> that was for me a big learning to understand there are different ways of teaching and I can pick which one I want to do. And that was that they didn't tell me this when I was 13. <laughs> so um, thank God we never stop learning and we always keep expanding our horizons. <laughs> During all this journey that you had, did you had... Um, like a really big challenge i mean despite of what you just mentioned in terms of like okay you had to look at your number you had to pivot but also like having this crisis you know like was there anything so after you realize okay i have to change something and now i have to build a business what was this biggest challenge that you may have experienced maybe throughout the journey maybe just at the beginning and then you solved it so do you mm. have like this this one thing where you said like whoa if i wouldn't have cracked that one that would have really gone bad I think there's probably not just one thing, there's a few things, but they're all in different kind of categories. The first challenge that I came across was that I wasn't outsourcing fast enough because I was growing so quick. And I know that not everyone has the issue, but sometimes if you just hit the niche and you hit the nail on the head, the target's right there and people literally come in, in swarms, sometimes you don't have enough systems in place to actually support them. And, and get that information out fast enough, create enough content to keep people happy. So I wish I would have outsourced faster and had hired faster. Um, it's difficult though, like if you're not making the kind of extra 50, $60,000 a year just yet to hire someone, you feel like, oh, I don't have the money yet, but you're not gonna be able to get to the next step unless you invest and get that person to help you with stuff. So yeah, that's probably the first one. And then another one, which I think a lot of people go through when you are like on the highest high and you have achieved, like I've had a, I don't know, hundred or $200,000 a month or something like that. You always want to go more and more and more, which is a good thing. But sometimes you've got to think back of where you came from because sometimes you're stressing yourself out way too much. And then you feel like you're not good enough if you don't reach that exact goal again. And rather than thinking about the money goal, I now try and think how many people can I help? And if I help even just one person, I'm happy with that. I mean, COVID now obviously put a bit of a spinner in the works as well, which means, I don't know if it's an Australian saying or not. Um, it's like, it put a halt to a lot of things. So lucky for me, I was online. So for me to be able to, switch pretty much everything to go online and create new online content for people in need that weren't able to see their clients because all of their salons were shut. And I don't just have salon clients, I have other clients as well where their businesses, brick and mortar businesses were shut. So it's all about reinventing yourself in times of crises and trying to come up with new ideas. But it's not just in times of crisis, you've just got to develop constantly you've got to think of new ideas you've got to strategize 
you always have to try and grow because if your business isn't growing, it's going to die eventually. And I think the third thing would be never to get complacent because I have been there. Like I had great months and I'm like, all right, I'm good. You know, I don't have to do anything anymore. And then I saw other people taking over from the back, you know, competitors taking over. I was one of the first to ever create online courses in the world in my profession. But that didn't mean that I was staying the, fir the, the first one forever. People started to take over and I was like, oh, crap, I've got to put some more work in. So don't slow down. <laughs> don't think only because you are at a certain stage, it's going to stay like that. Things keep developing. Things keep changing. There's so many more suppliers now in my profession popping up. And it's difficult sometimes to stay on top of it. So you've got to know your marketing. You maybe have to get a team involved to help you kind of develop your new ideas and really get it out to the public because there's so many platforms popping up here and there, TikTok, Instagram Reels, and you try and be everywhere, but really just focus on the one goal at a time as well. I guess this is tip number four. <laughs> I think that's enough, <laughs> enough things. <laughs> It's really amazing. And so I just keep you, it's, it's really gold. Cool. I mean, guys, really, I mean, if you haven't taken notes, please rewind afterwards and take notes because that is really gold. I mean, this is somebody who achieved it, who has made it. It's not just like some textbook explanation. This is real business advice from somebody who made it. So please take that to heart, okay? You will maybe not have a chance so fast to speak to somebody like this again. So take take advantage of this. <laughs> You just this is hard. Yeah. And you hear all this fluffy stuff and everyone is always so perfect on social media. But literally, if and I was actually thinking about hiring like a, a team to follow me around for a week just to show people what it's really like to be in business. And most of the time it's this me sitting in front of a laptop, typing away, me being on phone calls, supporting my clients me going live, trying to do things in a happy mood, even though I feel like crap. You know, there's so many different facets to this. And it's not just roses, like 80%, you know, the rule of Pareto, 80%, 20% type thing. Yeah, 80% of your efforts come from 20% of the tasks. Sorry, 80% of your results come from 20% of the efforts that you're doing. And you have to do that consistently, even if you don't feel like it, you know? And I don't feel like it sometimes. But you just got to keep soldiering on because yeah. that's what we are here for. We are entrepreneurs and being an entrepreneur isn't, isn't easy. You already mentioned that you are a lot on, on phone calls. I mean, I, I meet a lot of entrepreneurs and especially the introverts. They always complain. I mean, on the one hand, online is amazing because you have so fast access to people. On the other hand, I see so many people hiding behind their laptop, not really willing to go on like to meet people and they're like yeah but I'm shy and you know and I'm always telling them like guys you need to meet people to really like to expand your business like how do you want how you want to get the word out if nobody knows who you are right so how much time I mean just for the listeners seven digit business how much time do you spend like really on building connections making new connections um keeping updates with existing clients like how much of your time approximately is that in a day one a week depending well yeah it is daily first of all and it's not just about talking to someone on the phone it is about creating content and being in front of your followers and in front of your clients daily so creating content is daily i can't really tell you exactly how many hours but i would say it's a big portion of it and then a lot of the por uh, the other portion is fulfillment so being on phone calls with my coaching clients um and doing i have a physical academy as well and lucky we are able to work in australia right now so i have students coming in um that i train physically in person for a whole week so i have that one-on-one -on -one contact as well which is good but i would recommend already booked out i saw already <laughs> if you want to yeah. work with her, be fast <laughs> well the beta version yeah, yeah. So we have a new program where I, I always like to test things before I actually create the content. <laughs> um, so it's a smart way to do it because if you want to create online courses, you can't create online courses for three months and then no one will buy your stuff, right? So you got to sell it first and then create the content. So you got to, yeah, create the content after you have sold a few. So I um, have a beta version of a new mastermind. It's like an elite academy. High, a high level with one-on-one -on -one support from me for an entire four months. And most of the girls that are in there, there's six of them now, which is my beta group. We're going to open it up 
for people in, in like two or three months. But with these girls now, I'm creating the content, you know, I'm helping them grow their business to 20, 30, whatever, how many thousand they want per month. I'm helping them with all their marketing, their strategizing, the Facebook ads, Instagram, creating content. And once that's all done with those few girls, I will then open it up to the public because you need to test your stuff first. You can't just create something and expect everyone to come like flies and buy your stuff. I mean, I've built this business for the last, what is it now, 2021, six years or so. Um, and I've built connections. And this is what it's all about, like building true connections, being really transparent. And then people will want to pay whatever you say the price will be, you know. So having that kind of following that will buy anything that you have to offer that takes a while. It takes a while to build. And you've just got to be constantly visible and helpful, even if you don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think in today's age, day and age, there's too many wannabe coaches. There's too many people coaching others that haven't even done what they're teaching. And so it's very difficult sometimes for the public to make up their mind if someone is truly genuine. Yeah. So if you have um, an ad out and it goes to click funnels, someone might be great at marketing and they might have all of these funnel steps and everything. It looks amazing. But that's that can also be a lot of BS because they're just good at marketing doesn't mean that their training is really good. So I always recommend to have a look at people and all the reviews that they're getting. What, where are they online? Are, are they giving value? Like, have you seen that person before? I feel really, really sad for a lot of people that are being scammed these days of other business coaches. I don't even know how we got to that conversation, but I think it's really important, <laughs> an important one to have. And I think it's a very great point because this is actually the last question because I want to be respectful of your time. Um, so you. Um, you mentioned that you have a Facebook group and you give out value. And one of the comments I also hear a lot is like, but I don't want to give away all my stuff for free because then people don't need to buy my products anymore. What's your point on that? <laughs> my point on that is sprinkle value like confetti. It will always come back to you. Yeah. That's I 100 all. 100% sign that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have, a, I have a great little example just for a minute. Um, I went live to genuinely show... Um, the difference between two or three different products yeah I literally showed them the how to and I wasn't doing this to sell anything or to you know it was literally just to create content and because people were asking the same question over and over again if that happens in your Facebook group answer that question you know do it in a video format because this is how I build all my online courses I built all my online courses by simply listening to what my followers were struggling with and I created um, content for that to help them with that so I was doing this video maybe 20 minute long didn't expect anything in return but that was my biggest day in the month of sales um, of online courses and products that that very same day and that was only like a couple of weeks ago um, and that was literally me showing everything that I knew about this certain topic because I needed to answer misconceptions that were in the group and it really was grinding my gears that people were giving the wrong advice i'm like right i'm going to do a video i'm going to give the right advice and i'm going to show everything i don't care if i give away content or whatnot but people then said oh my god this actually got me over the hump to actually buy your online courses i have looked at them for months and now i can genuinely see some of the content because you just showed it live and now i'm buying it you know so don't, don't worry about it. Like I wouldn't go live in a Facebook group for like three or four hours and give away everything, but give away little snippets and be very genuine about it and, and tell them about your experience and your expertise. Yeah. Yeah. I can totally buy, as I totally sign that. And I think also, don't forget, people will have different problems after, as they move forward. So if they realize that you help them solve one problem, they may have 10 other ones <laughs> and they may want to yeah, come right. back to you for those 10 other problems. So I would never also yeah. hide away value because even if it's not that person who asked that question, 20 other people saw it as well. And they may say, oh, that person has knowledge. I want to buy from them. Totally with you. That's right. And also it grooms your followers into maybe one day 
actually purchasing a higher ticket item. You know, they might start small, you grow with them, and then one day they might be able to do a five, six thousand dollar client. You know, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. So absolutely. Congratulations on your success. Are people allowed to reach out to you? And if yes, what's the best way to get in contact with you? Look, I think the best way for me is always via Facebook, um, because that's where we happen to have genuine conversations. Emails are very impersonal. So you can just find me under Julia Jacqueline Mann. It's uh, Jacqueline without a C, straight into the QU. <laughs> um, um, if you don't know how to spell that, I, Google I will, it. I will link it. We have an end screen at the end and I will link your name. <laughs> Perfect. So yeah, just find me on my Facebook and message me directly. That's the fastest and easiest way. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. Stay awesome, everyone. There you have it, Guy. That was the interview with Julia. And I mean, this was really great insights. I mean, if you did not take notes, I'm really sorry for you. You have to go back and do that. I mean, she gave you so many tips on how to grow a business. How do you build communities? How do you share value without giving away too much? So she was giving you so many insights. It was really, really valuable. So, I mean, I took a lot of notes for myself. So <laughs> you better do the same. I'm going to share Julia's contact details. So as you heard, she, she prefers Facebook Messenger. So I'm going to put her link um, into the end screen and also below the video so that you can uh, reach out to her on Facebook Messenger. Also, she said, if you have any questions on the elite program that she talked about, the she has a, a beta phase at the moment at, at the recording of this video in that moment. Uh, which is March 2021. <laughs> so just in case you see this video in five years. Um, so this video is recorded in March 2021. So if in case you listen on this on this video and you have not yet seen her elite program because it's still in better phase, um, if you have any questions on it, the mastermind that she's talked about, please feel free to send her a message via Facebook Messenger. So she's really fast in responding there. Also, if you have any other questions, if you have questions about her products, if you have questions about her coaching, please reach out to her. She's amazing. She's a real entrepreneur. She's no, no fluff, no BS, right? She's really straight down and she really understood how business runs. That's why she's making seven figures, right? So I hope you found this valuable. I hope you, I hope you had fun. And I hope that you are back next time when we have another amazing guest as well. Thank you very much for tuning in this week. Uh, I wish you a wonderful rest of your day, wherever you are in the world. Thank you very much for all your support and all your feedback. And we see us back next week. Bye-bye.